Hi everybody, today's video is all about the classic negative film simulation from Fujifilm. So if you watch the channel at all, you'll be familiar with this guy. This is my X-Pro3, this is one of my favorite cameras ever, I love it, and I've been really loving exploring some Fuji JPEG recipes um, in this camera recently a lot of which feature the classic negative film simulation. So if you're familiar with Fujifilm, you probably know that the classic negative simulation is a newer film simulation. It's available on the newer Fujifilm cameras like the X-Pro3, the X100V, the X-T4, so you won't find it on the older models. Now, for those of you who are wondering what the film simulations are, they're basically color profiles that are built into the Fujifilm cameras. When you're shooting with the Fujifilm camera, you can shoot both JPEG and RAW. And what's really great is that the JPEGs can take on these incredible film simulations. So you choose your film simulation in camera and that simulation is applied to all the JPEGs that you shoot in camera. And you also see it as a JPEG preview in the LCD and in the viewfinder. Now the really cool thing about Fujifilm is that you also have those film simulations available to you as profiles in editing software like Capture One and Lightroom. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through several examples of images that I've shot recently on both the X-Pro3 and the X100V, and we're gonna look at how the classic negative film simulation is applied to both RAW files and JPEG files. Now, I'm obviously not an expert in classic negative, um, but I have used it for quite a while, and these are just gonna be some of my thoughts, my experiences, having used the film simulation, what it's good for, which is, uh, spoiler alert, pretty much everything. So let's take a look inside of Capture One. I am in Capture One today. To change the film profile, we go here to our curve. I'm just here, what is this panel called? Adjustments? Oh, exposure. Um, I'm not, I don't use Capture One all the time, but we're using it today because I, I think it's useful for this sort of uh, scenario. You can also have these settings as camera profiles in Lightroom. Um, so here in the curve, you see all of Fuji's incredible film simulations. So Classic Neg here applied to this photograph. You can sort of see what it does. Um, as comparison, here's Classic Chrome, Classic Neg. I think overall classic negative really creates this really deep sort of faded look. The colors are really punchy and there's a lot of contrast, but it's also faded in a way. Here's a photo that I shot with my X100V. By the way, look at this crazy detail. I, um, I'm in love with the X100V. I just have to say, I, I sent it back. I returned it because I, I just, I don't really have any reason to have it um, right now, even though I love it. So I think I'll buy it again later on um, when it's a little bit cheaper. But anyway, so this is a photo shot on the X100V. Let's see what it looks like when applying the classic negative film simulation. There we go. So you can see this really faded, beautiful look. I find that with greens and reds and oranges, it really makes these incredible colors. Uh, here's a photo of Scout, which you may have seen before. Let's go down again to classic negative, and there you go. Again, deeper, more punchy. Um, that's the before, that's the after. So you can see it makes the blues a little bit more teal, makes the greens a little bit more yellow, but also deeper. Um, it just really creates this really interesting, faded, contrasty punch. Uh, here is a landscape of Santa Barbara at dusk. Again, classic negative. That's before, that's after, before, after. So again, this really faded, filmic look. Here's one of Santa Barbara from the Riviera. Again, if we go to classic negative, again, faded, filmic sort of look. As a comparison, here's classic chrome, which is a little bit more vibrant. Classic negative, which is a little bit more faded. Here's another example. I think I may have shot this on classic chrome. That's classic chrome, classic neg, classic chrome, classic neg. Now the reason I'm comparing classic chrome and classic negative is because really classic chrome was my favorite film simulation prior to classic negative. Classic chrome is a film simulation that you can really use on anything, a variety of subjects. It just creates a nice little pop. 
uh, the classic negative is is similar in a way that it just creates a, a punch. It's a little bit more present. It's a little bit more obvious. The colors are a little bit deeper. They're richer in classic negative. But it's useful in a lot of the same ways that the classic chrome film simulation is useful. Uh, here's another example. Uh, that's it. Turn on. Let's, here's classic neg. In this example, which just really makes this scene really vibrant. I mean, look at that. Look at that. You can see all these details um, sort of gain a sort of clarity when we apply this film simulation. Really interesting. Uh, here's one more, just of a lot of blues. We can see classic neg, classic chrome. They each affect the blues in a very different way. Um, really up to your personal preference. Here's a JPEG. So you can see, now we're seeing how the classic negative film simulation gets applied to skin tones. And you can see his skin becomes sort of orangey, like sort of deep red orange kind of color. And that's what I've noticed a lot with skin tones in classic neg. There are a few things that are interesting about shooting people in classic negative. One is that you get this really deep orangey color. The other is the difference between exposures. When you expose the film simulation differently, it really is rendered differently. So I find that when I'm shooting people with classic negative, I think it's better to expose the image a little bit more than you probably would want to. So if you overexpose the image by a stop, it looks a little bit better to me than if you just expose it correctly because Overexposing has this beautiful airy sort of look to it and everything sort of even out, evens out a little bit So it's not as punchy. I'll show you that again in another example Here's Maggie. Here's Maggie with classic neg, classic chrome um, Eterna, monochrome, but classic negative creates this really interesting look um, I really like it with her and her fur sort of deepens and these greens behind her take on a little bit uh, deeper of a color, almost a bluish kind of color. Here's again another photo of a person, this is my girlfriend. Uh, so this is Shanoa. I shot this in JPEG and in RAW. So now we can compare the two. Oh boy, here we go. So we have the JPEG image on the left, the RAW image on the right. The film simulation is saying auto. That's because I shot this on the camera in classic neg and capture one really cool, it automatically uh, applies that curve to the photos here. So you see both of them are classic neg. They look a little bit different and if we zoom in, uh, we can kind of see the differences here, uh, namely in the grain. So if you see the grain here, this was applied in camera to the JPEG. Uh, all of Fuji cameras have a grain setting and the new, now in the newer uh, cameras you have, you can have strong and weak and large and small grains, so you can sort of vary the types of grains that you're getting. I still kind of prefer the grain here in Capture One as opposed to the grain that comes out of the JPEG. There's just something about the JPEG grain and the Fuji cameras that isn't super pleasing in my opinion. I really, I love grain. I add it to almost all of my images and I'm kind of, that's one thing about the processing in the Fujifilm cameras that I'm not in love with is the, the grain rendering. It just, it doesn't seem as pleasing to me as it could. Maybe you'll disagree, I don't know. But I do keep the grain on because I like having grain in my JPEGs. So I, even though it's not the exact <laughs> uh, rendering that I would like, it's still pretty good and um, it, it, it is definitely um, does the job. So anyway, so you'll hear, see here in the RAF file that there is no grain because this is a raw file. But let's take a look at what she looks like if we process it with a different film simulation. So here, for example, let's do, um, here's Astia, classic chrome, again, classic neg, Eterna is very flat. We have Proneg High and Proneg Standard, which are both really solid uh, portrait film simulations. Provia, okay, and then we have this, these Velvias. I would, Velvia is a little bit too saturated for me. So let's look at Proneg High, for example. So in Proneg High, this is beautiful. Like this color would be really great. If you move something to something like Classic Negative, again, this is just a really stylized look. It might come across as over edited. Her skin might come across as being too orange here, whereas with Proneg, um, it's a little bit more natural, uh, but again, that is up to your preference and how you envision the shot. Again, here, uh, an example between two images, the JPEG here on the right. Um, these are actually 
not the same image, but they're similar. <laughs> the JPEG here on the right, the uh, RAW file on the left. And again, if we change up the film simulation here, classic chrome, classic neg, you can see how here in classic chrome, the wood becomes a little bit more pink. Here in classic neg, it just becomes more yellow or green. It just deepens. It's, it's this really strong look, but it still looks filmic. It doesn't look too processed to me in this example. I think it's a really nice look. Um, here's again, another example of Shinoa. If we zoom in here, so the JPEG on the left, the raw file on the right. Now for me, I think this is a really interesting image. And I think the JPEG came out really well. Again, if I'm shooting someone's portraits, I don't know that I would always use classic negative because it's just very stylized. Like, for example, here's Proneg High. And I think that Proneg High in this case is just a better choice because it's less obviously processed. The color isn't something that you know, you might send to a client and they might not love that they're looking a little bit orange. I don't know. Again, it's up to your preference, up to your style, up to what you're shooting. But I think in this example, Proneg is probably a better choice. Or I photograph some plants. And again, we're starting to see the same sort of trends. Here on the left, the JPEG, on the right, the raw file. And we can sort of see the differences as we scroll through these film simulations. Asia is sort of this really vivid yellowy um, and the colors. Classic Chrome is similar to Classic Neg, but not as faded. Here we get to Classic Neg and it's a little bit more faded. The greens are more deep, almost blue. Um, Eterna is very flat, Proneg high, Proneg standard. So really the, I love what classic, classic negative does in this film simulation. It really deepens this picture, makes it rich, makes it vibrant, makes it a little bit filmic. It just really makes it beautiful. Um, okay, let's tr look at these. So these are two JPEGs and uh, this I wanted to show you uh, how the images are rendered when they're shot at different exposures. So for example, here on the left, this is about a stop or so overexposed. And on the right is properly exposed, metering for this uh, main, um, whatever this is, I don't know, plant guy. <laughs> so you can see how much the film simulation opens up when you overexpose it. It becomes light and airy and this really beautiful quality to it. And here when it's exposed, correctly, um, it's a little bit more deeper, there's more contrast there. Here's an image of me. This is just a JPEG. I found a mirror on one of my walks and decided to take this photo. Again, here's an example of these uh, two JPEGs, one overexposed, one underexposed, oh, properly exposed, I should say. Okay, so similar idea over here. Let's move to these two JPEGs. Um, again, properly exposed here on the left and a little bit overexposed on the right. Um, so you can see how the image on the right really opens up. The left, uh, there's more contrast here with the shadows and the highlights. Uh, the colors are a little bit more punchy. Like the theme of this video is pretty much uh, you decide if you like this film simulation and how you wanna use it, if you wanna shoot it a little bit overexposed. The really beautiful thing about this film simulation is it just, it's, it, as you're seeing in these examples, it changes so much depending on your exposure. So you can be really creative with what you do with this film simulation. Now, the other thing about Fuji cameras is, as you probably know, you can change specific settings in camera to create what some people call JPEG recipes or Fujifilm recipes. And you can save those images um, as custom settings. So basically what that means is you can take a, a generic image like this one shot on classic negative and you can tweak it by decreasing the shadows and increasing the highlights, adding sharpness, adding clarity, adding um, different effects in the camera so that you're basically doing a little bit of your own color processing and tweaking in camera and setting that up before you even take a photo. It's a really amazing way of working. And I started doing that with some images. I've really invested in some of Kevin Mullen's videos recently and in their podcast, uh, the Fuji cast. So if you don't know Kevin Mullins, check him out. But he released a video recently about his uh, camera profiles, his camera settings for his custom profiles in camera. Uh, and I was experimenting with those over the weekend. So for example, here is one 
This is a uh, tweaked version of the classic negative film simulation. This is Kevin's Merowitz film simulation here. So it's, it's deep. I was metering for the lighter half of my face to create this sort of dark shadow here on the right side of my face. If you look here at the raw file, let's apply the, the curve here, yeah. So if you look here between the JPEG and the raw file, they look a little bit different uh, and that's a result of these tweaks that are being made in camera that really makes this a really unique version of classic negative. So it's taking that film simulation a step further even and applying your own tweaks to it in camera. It's really amazing, you can get some incredible looks. Here's another example here of me with the 16-55 to 2.8 lens just shooting this in the mirror. You can see the little bit of uh, variation here in these photos. Really, really cool stuff. Um, let's see if I have anything else. Oh, and then here's just a studio shot that I've showed you in a previous video, and uh, this was shot with Classic Neg uh, again here. So if you go to Classic Neg there, creates this really interesting effect with the skin tone as opposed to Classic Chrome, which is this really pink sort of washed out, which I don't love here. Proneg High, uh, Proneg Standard, and then again, um, here's a Terna and Classic Neg. It's just even more vibrant and punchy than the rest. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video about the Classic Negative film simulation, just going through some of the examples from, from my personal work here. Let me know what you think about the film simulation. There are tons of articles and videos out there about it. It's really exciting to be able to use these, uh, these color profiles in camera because you can just tweak them in so many ways. And I think as we move forward, Fuji will continue to add um, the ability to make changes in camera with these incredible custom settings. Um, and the JPEGs come out, they're so high quality that you can probably just get by with using JPEGs. It's the closest thing to shooting film in a digital camera, I think, out there. Uh, and they're a lot of fun to play with. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. See you in the next video. Bye. Love is free.